out the box model, how to style elements on the page by using borders, how to use rounded corners, how to create backgrounds by changing the colors, using gradients, and even background images, and also how to create box shadows. For this lesson, I created a new document called Borders and Backgrounds, which is just simply a copy of our template.html file. I changed the title and also the header h1 to Borders and Backgrounds, and I added a link to our index.html file that will take us to this new document that I created. I have used borders in the previous lessons to show you different things that are on the page and to explain to you how things will go across the page, how things will be formatted and so forth. I am going to continue using borders today to show you how this thing called the box model works. Alright, so I am going to make a, um, a new division and I am going to call it uh, div1 and some stuff can go inside of there. And I have another division that I'm going to call div2, and some stuff will go inside of here. So I'm going to put some text inside of here. This is simply uh, div1, and I'm going to put some text inside of this one that says div2. Okay, so now when I when I put this on my page, I haven't done anything to format it, so they will just simply show up as two separate paragraphs. And I want to start applying some, some CSS formatting to them. I'm going to create the styles in my head style section, so this is an embedded style sheet. And I used an ID, so that means if I want to reference it, I have to put a pound sign div1. And then all of the stuff that I want to use to format that goes inside of here. And I want to format the ID called div2, and this one gets formatted like this. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to turn the border on so you can see these. So the first one here, I'm going to set the border equal to one pixel solid uh, black. And the other one, I'm going to set the border equal to one pixel solid blue refresh the page and there are my two divs. Now what you will notice is that my divs are block level elements which means that they take up all the space from the left side of the document all the way to the right side of the document. And there is currently some space in between the edge of my window and the edge of that div and this is called a margin. So if I want to I can increase the margin here and move the div further away from the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify for div1 that the left margin, so margin left, is equal to 25 pixels. So this should move it 25 pixels away from the edge of my window. And there we go. Okay, I can do things like margin right, and we'll set that to 40 pixels. Now what this will do is as I resize my browser window, that div will still only be 25 pixels from this side and 40 pixels from this side. It doesn't change. So the div will always go all the way across the page and just simply stay away from the edges by that amount. I don't always necessarily want it to do that. So what I want to do instead of using the margin is I'm going to uh, set up a specific width for it. So this particular element here I'm going to make it 200 pixels wide. So I'm going to set its width to 200 pixels and now when I save this and refresh it still starts here a couple of pixels in but it's only 200 pixels wide. Alright so if I want to make it a little bit wider let's say 400 then it will be twice as wide. Alright so the one down below I want to make this one a little skinnier so I'm going to set the width for this one to 200 pixels. And now I have a larger one and a smaller one. But what I want to show to you is that they are still both block level elements, which means that 
even though there is white empty space over here, other items won't actually appear here because I've, I've placed a div and a div is supposed to take up all the space from edge to edge. So all I'm doing is just simply controlling where it's, it thinks that the edge is. I also want to control the height of these. I can do that in here. So I'm going to say this is height of 400 pixels. So I'm, I want to make a square. And when I refresh, now I get a box that is like this. Okay, but if you notice, div2 is still down below it, and div2 will stay below even if I set its height to 200 pixels. All right, but I don't necessarily want div2 to be below it. I want div2 to be above it. Well, I'm sorry, not above it, but inside of it. So we will get to that in just a minute on how to do that. But before we do, I want to start coloring these a little bit. I want to make them look a little bit different. Okay, so I showed you this way of making a border by specifying border and then so many pixels wide, it's solid and black. I have different ways that I can format these. Okay, so instead of saying border one pixel solid black, what I want to do is um, specify something like uh, border left. And what I can do is I can specify just the values for the left border. By doing it this way, I have to define the colors, or the, I'm sorry, the borders for each side, but now I can actually specify them separately. Okay, so I want to specify that my left border is one pixel solid red. And if I save this and refresh, you'll see that now my border is red, and it's only on the left side because I've only defined it as being the left side. Okay, and I want the border right to be uh, three pixels solid green. And you notice this one's a little bit wider and it's green. I have border top and I can set the border top to 10 pixels solid yellow, which yellow is kind of hard to see on a white background, but we'll see that by making it a little bit wider we can see it and so forth. So I can set all of the borders for the different sides. I can make them all different colors. And so I'm going to make the border bottom um, four pixels solid blue. Okay, now blue is the same color as the one down here. So <clears throat> save it and refresh. Whoops, and I misspelled border, so I need to fix that. Refresh, and there's my border. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm specifying what the color is for each side, but now I also have the ability that instead of being solid, I could do things like make it dashed or dotted. So I'm going to make this blue one dotted. And my solid green will make this dashed. And now I can control a little bit better what the actual style is, and I can do it per side. Okay, so I want to show you more of what these really are when I'm talking about dashed and uh, dotted. So I'm going to make these 13 and 14. And you'll see the difference now. Dashed is kind of like a coupon. It has the dotted line. And then um, the dotted is just simply the dots that are along it. So before I go into the box model, I'm going to put this back to border and I'm going to do that the border is five pixels solid uh, black. Just so it's a little bit wider and you can see it better. And I'm also going to make the border of this item down here a little bit wider. And that way we can see them better. Okay, so what I have is I have a box. And my box right now contains text. And the text right now is just simply staying up here in the top left. So what I want to do is I want to control where the text is within my box. For now, the only real way that I have to control where the text is is I can simply st uh, state whether I want it to be left aligned, right aligned, or centered. So I'm just simply going to say text um, align, and we'll set this to center. And then now if I come over here and refresh, now my text is in the center. So it's 
just a way for me to move it to the center of the box instead of having it left aligned. But if you notice when I center it though, it's centered to the width of the box because it actually is centered to the container. And its container is from this left side of the box to this right side of the box. All right, so if I do away with this line, put it back the way that it is, you'll notice that div one is tight against the left side. It's tight against the, the um, border. And I want it in a little bit more. So what I am going to do is I'm going to manipulate the CSS so that it shoves div one over a little bit away from the side. To do this, I am going to increase what is called the padding. Now, a margin is the space from the outside of my window to the outside of my container object. Then I have the border width to worry about. And then inside of here, I have this thing called padding, which padding is the space from the edge of the border to the beginning of the content. And so what I want to do is I want to increase the padding a little bit. Margin is outside the box. Padding is inside the box. So I want to set the padding to 20 pixels. Okay, now watch what happens when I refresh over here. My border is right here right now. And when I refresh, you will notice that it increased not only the width of the box, but also the height. And the reason for it is, what it actually just did is it made a 20 pixel border inside of this div. And the space inside of there is actually 400 pixels now. So this width is not the width of the div. This width is the width of what is contained within the div. So what's inside of the padding? Okay, so I don't necessarily want all of the um, data that's inside of this box to be that far away from the edge. So I can also do, do just padding left. And now it just simply moves it to the left. So it brought the box back a little bit, but now we no longer have the 20 pixels on the bottom, the right, and the top. All right, so I want to do something like changing the padding for all of the sides. Okay, so the the um, left side, I want it 20 pixels. The padding uh, top is going to be, let's say, 2 pixels. The padding uh, right is going to be uh, 50 pixels. And the padding bottom is going to be 25 pixels. All right, so when I refresh, it now increases the size of my box because I made more room for the content, and the content is what is 400 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall. So by just simply adding these, my width of the content area is 400, but the width of the div is 400 plus 20 plus 50. So it's the 470 pixels wide. And then my height is 400 for the, for the contents, plus 2 pixels on the top, plus 25 pixels on the bottom. All right, so I don't necessarily want to type all this out as three, I'm sorry, as four separate statements. Instead of typing these out as four separate statements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this, and I'm just simply going to type padding. Okay, now when I did it the first time, I did padding 20 pixels. I put 20 pixel padding the whole way around it. What I can do is I can put all four values inside of this one padding statement. And the way that it works is I'm going to specify the top value, the right value, the bottom value, and then the left value. And it always works that way. Top, right, bottom, left. Okay, so my padding top was 2 pixels, my padding right was 50 pixels, my padding bottom was 25 pixels, and my padding left was 20 pixels, semicolon. Okay, so this is the, what, the shorthand way to write the padding with all four of the sides. And we can actually do the same thing with the border. If I wanted to, I could specify my border. I could just say border. 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 5 pixels, and that would be the border for all the sides. The catch is going to be that I can't do this and combine some other things like color. So I would actually have to specify all of my colors as separate elements too. Okay, so if I come over here and refresh, it looks exactly the same because even though I type this in just one line, it means the same as padding top, padding right, padding bottom, padding left. It's always top, 
right, bottom, left. All right, so I want to get div2 inside of this div1 box. And the way that I'm going to do that is by playing with nesting. Okay, so right now I have my div2 statement is here outside of the div1 statement. What I am going to do is cut it and then come right after div1 and paste it. So now what I have is the div for div1, here's div1, contains the div for div2. And now if I save this and refresh, now my div2 is inside of div1. This is the way that we nest divs. So what I've done is just simply cut and pasted the entire div section for div2 and just made sure that it is inside of the beginning and closing div statements for div1. I want to start putting some content into my div1 section. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to paste in the dummy text that we used in another document. This is the one that we used for our uh, more CSS document last time. And so I'm just simply going to paste this a couple of times. And I just want to have a little bit of text in here, so we're just going to make two paragraphs. Okay, so now if I save that and refresh, I now get text that's here. And if you notice what happens is I force the height of this container div, div1, to only be 400 pixels tall. And what happens is the text here will force my block to move outside of that. So my div2 moves out. All right, so what can happen though is all of this, if I even just repeat these, and refresh, everything can go outside of that box. So even though this is the container div for all of this text, the text can actually still go outside of that box. We do need to keep that in mind because sometimes things can flow outside of the box like they should not be doing. So what I'm going to do is just simply delete those extra two that I placed in there. Okay, so back to just this. Okay, now what I actually want to happen is I have a whole bunch of white space over here that I don't want to be white space. I want to wrap this text around this box here. And the way that I'm going to do that is for my uh, div2, I am going to do what's called a float. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a CSS attribute here that will allow me to float that box to the left or to the right of where the text is that's contained in this box. To do this, I just simply type the word float. And what side do I want it on? Do I want it on the left side or on the right side? So I'm going to float it on the left, save it. And now what will happen when I refresh is it's actually going to float it to the left side of this text down here. And the reason for it is, is my, my div is not inside of this paragraph. Okay, so I don't want it inside of that par or outside of that paragraph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this div from here to inside of my paragraph. And now when I refresh, I now have a division, which remember, a division is a block level element. So I'm taking a block level element, something that should not be allowed to be inside of text, and I am forcing it to be inside where the text belongs, but making it float to the left. And the idea here is that I can now force this box to be in, in line with the text and get the text to wrap around it. The thing is, by doing this, sometimes you get unexpected results. Like if you look at this, I can see that my, um, that my letters are tight against the box. So I want to make it where those letters get moved over just a little bit. And remember with the box model, I can play with either the padding inside of the div, or I can play with the margin outside of the div. So for div two, I want to play with something outside of the div. I want to increase its margin. So I'm going to 
create a margin dash right and move it over about 10 pixels. Okay, so now when I refresh the page, now I get something like this. So what I'm doing is I'm forcing there to be a space from the outside of the, the uh, border to where the next section of containing text is. If I had changed the, the margin or the padding for the text, it would also affect this down here. So by doing this div, I'm just simply moving things out of the way that are around the div. Which means if I decrease the size of this div to 100 by 100, my text will still move over, it'll move up, it'll still wrap around it, but I still get that nice little space around and my text will not be touching the box. So I'll put this back to 200 by 200 and refresh the page. So now what this does is just gives me a way to have text and an image in line. The text wraps around the, um, the div in here and the way that I do that is by specifying a float. Okay, now I can float it on the left or I can float it on the right. All right, and if I float it on the right, then it does something like this. Okay, now once again, I have this text is really tight to it, so now I want to set not margin right this time, but margin left. And now it forces a little bit of margin on the outside of this div. Now the thing is, is that it will automatically suck this div all the way to the left side because I have it floated to the um, right and it will be just outside of whatever is the text that is contained inside of the other div. So if I want this in a specific spot, we're going to have to use some other techniques that we will actually learn in the next lesson. I want to play with this a little bit and make it not look so square. And the way that I can do that is I can have rounded corners. And the way that I round these, it's called a border radius. And if you think about putting a circle in the corner here, how big of a circle would you need to get a radius that you want? Okay, so what I'm going to do is for my div 2, I am going to specify my border radius, and I will set it to 25 pixels. So imagine a circle whose radius is 25 pixels from the side and from the bottom. So the middle will be right about here. The circle would be about like this, and therefore it would cut off this corner here. So if I save this and then I refresh, you'll see that I get these rounded corners. All right, it looks nice, but watch what happens if I increase this too much. What can happen by doing this radius is that I could start overlapping the text that is contained in there. So we don't necessarily want to have these really large radiuses. If we do have one, then we need to start specifying things like our padding inside to move our text over a little bit more. So maybe I do padding left and increase this to 20 pixels. And then now what that does is shoves the outside of the box. Remember the padding the container will still be 200 pixels wide. The padding is from the contents to the border. So if you notice, it just shoved this over a little bit more. Okay, so we'll put this back the way that it was. Put it back to 25 pixels. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with div 1. I'm going to set its border radius to 25 pixels. Refresh, and now we have some boxes that look a little more stylish. Okay, so this, I still don't like the way that this is. It's a little too much on the one inside. So you just play with the size of the radius. The smaller number, the smaller the radius will be, the larger the number, the larger radius. The next thing that I want to do is give this document a little bit of life. I want it to feel like these are not just simply drawn boxes. I want it to feel like they actually exist and have depth. And the way that we do that is through using a shadow. And in CSS it is called a box shadow. And so our box shadow has some values that we need to set. And the values are going to be how far to the left or right do I want it to be? How far up and down do I want it to be? How wide of a shadow or how much of a blur do I want? And then what color do I want my shadow to be? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a shadow that is 20 pixels to the right. 
It is zero pixels up and down. It is um, 10 pixels wide, and we're going to set its color to almost black. Okay, so when I refresh the page over here, you'll notice that I get a gray border that shows up around it, and this, this is the shadow. Okay, so actually we're going to go ahead and just simply make this black. Okay, so it is just a very faint shadow. It is 20 pixels to the right. It is not moved up and down at all. So what you'll notice is that it's blurred from the edge of our div. It starts a gradient and it starts to go from black out to white. Okay, so the wider that I make this thing, the more it is blurred, the more pronounced it gets. So that's 20 pixels. All right, so if I do a little bit more, let's say 30 pixels, it starts making it more and more pronounced and it starts making it feel like this element is up off the page. The only problem is, is that I'm going to start encountering a problem here if I go too big that it's going to start going over top of my text down here. So I want to keep this relatively small, usually 20 pixels is enough. And now I also want to move it down a little bit. So I moved it 20 pixels to the right. I want to move it 20 pixels down so that way it looks like the sun is shining from the top left corner. And when I save this and refresh, now it is moved over and down and now it looks like the sun is shining from the top left down over it and it looks like the shadow is behind it to the right. Alright, so it just simply gives it a little bit of life. Alright, our other one, our div one, is we're going to do the same thing, so we're going to do a box shadow. And this one, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to move it um, 30 pixels to the right, um, 40 pixels down, and we'll make it 30 pixels wide. And I want to make it a um, more of a red color. So that should be a little bit more red. There we go. All right, so notice what happens, though, is I get the red, but it, the red quickly fades out to a grayish color, and that's what will always happen with these. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, make it 50 pixels instead, and it still starts as red, and it always will fade out to a gray color. All right, so I want to move this to the left. Then to move it to the left, all I am doing is, instead of a positive number, I will have a negative number. So the first number is left and right, the second number is up and down, this number is how wide, and this is the color. So if I make this a negative, then it will move my shadow to the left instead. If I make the second value a negative, it will move it up instead of down. And there we go. So now it looks like the sun for this one is shining from the bottom right, and the shadow is now up at the top left. In reality, though, I don't necessarily want to do this because this really messes with people's eyes. I want it to look like if the sun is shining down from the top left on one of these, it wants to, I want it to shine down on the top left from all of them. So I am going to do um, 30 pixels and 30 pixels, so that way they're both in the same direction. They're both 45 degree angle down. And now it looks to me like the sun is shining this way, it makes this box like, look like it is top, on top of the other box, and then it makes this box look like it's on top of a background. So it just simply gives depth to the, the entire web page. The next thing that I want to do to, tr to provide some more life to this document is I would like to get a background image that would appear behind my divs. Okay, so the way that I'm going to do this is I want to manipulate the body and what I want to do is I want to add a background image. Okay, now the background image is going to be a URL to a file, so I need to know what the file is. All right, the file is under my images folder, and it is called greenstripedfield.jpg. So I'm going to copy this name. And so what I will do is I'm going to type the URL for this picture, and it is in the images folder so what I'm going to do is type the path to the images folder and then the name of the file okay so then the next thing is I need to have my semicolon 
Now because it is a path, I'm also going to include this path in a single quote. Oops, and it goes inside of the parentheses. And now when I come over to my document and refresh, I will now get my background image. Now the catch is going to be the background image is applied behind everything. And the thing is, is that each div needs to have its own background image. Okay, so I, I would, if I don't want this background image to show up in this div, I need to actually specify a color for it. So I'm going to state that the background color is, let's say, almost white. So we're going to do something like ed, ed, ed. And now what I've done is I've placed a background image behind everything, but then I allow this to have its own color so that way this stands out on the page. All right, so our borders and backgrounds up here is black. We need to fix that. We need to fix this down here. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I want to set my font family for everything to Arial and sans serif if I don't have Arial installed. And now everything is Arial sans serif. And I still have this thing up here that is black. I would like to make that look uh, better. I want to make it where you can see it. Okay, so this is my header, my header, and then down below my copyright is in the footer. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to manipulate both my header and my footer, so I can say header, comma, footer, and I'm going to color the text a certain color. Well, what color am I going to make it? It's going to be a hexadecimal, so a number and then EC, EC, EC. So I want to make it a, a grayish color. And there we go. So now the last thing I have is my UL to play with and all I have to do is restyle the UL, make it a specific color, and play with the pseudo classes for like hovering and visited and so forth just like we did in previous lessons and now we can style that. Okay, but I don't necessarily want this box here to be a solid color then what I can do is I can set it with its own background color. Okay, so for to begin with, I'm just going to do background color, which, yes, is going to be a solid color. And we'll set this to um, all nines, just to make it a little bit darker of a gray. Okay, so I can see that these actually have layers that the gray is put on top of the container element, which is the lighter gray, which is on top of its container element, which is the body. So I start getting this thing where each div belongs to another div and the final div belongs to the body. So it gives me an amount of inheritance that everything on the page can be manipulated as if it were a child of something else. So what I can do is if I don't want this to be white, I just simply remove the color and it will get the background from its parent object. The last thing that I want to play with is what's called a gradient. Now it used to be when I wanted to make a gradient, I had to actually make a gradient graphic in a photo editor and then I would have to put that, that graphic on my website, all the browsers would have to download it. Well, HTML5 the gradient is actually now built right into the um, into the declaration for HTML5. So what I want to do is inside of here, instead of being a, um, a gradient, I'm sorry, instead of being a solid color, I want to make it a gradient. So what I'm going to do is remove the word color. And instead of just simply saying that it's this specific color, I'm going to say that it is a linear gradient. And then what is the color from the top, comma, the color to the bottom? Okay, so the top color is going to be, um, let's say, white. So all Fs, comma, the bottom color will be gray. And when I refresh this, I now get a gradient. So it goes from white down to gray. All right, so let's make this blue so you can see what happens. And so now we get a white to blue gradient. All right, I have other kinds that I can use too. I also have what's called a radial gradient. 
and my radial gradient will give me a circle. So now I have white in the middle, out to blue in the outside, or if I reverse these, now I have something like this. So now it looks like a ball in the middle. So the linear, uh, linear gradient goes from the top to the bottom, and we can also do other directions, so we can do diagonally or side to side. Um, we just specify another keyword in there to be able to do it. So I just put my gradient back so that it goes from the top to the bottom, but if I wanted to go a different direction, all I have to do is specify what direction it's going to go. And the way that I do that is I say something like to right at the beginning. So the direction that's going to go to, and the color that starts, and the color that it ends. Save this, refresh. Now it starts as white to the left, blue to the right. I can go to the left. I can also do to the bottom, to the top, or I could do something like bottom right. And now I get a diagonal gradient. So this is just a way to kind of break it up so that way it's not a solid color, but it still provides the color on the page. It makes it look a little bit better than just that solid color. But I no longer have to create a specific graphic to make the gradient. The browser will do it for me. In this lesson, you learned about the box model, how to use margins and padding. You learned about borders, how to control the width, the style, and the color. You learned how to make rounded corners. You learned about background images, background colors, and gradients. And you also learned about the box model.